Hi friends, good morning. Six o'clock here on your Friday Eve. Nice. I said it. Friday <laughs> Eve, it is Thursday. Only one more sleep to the weekend. Hi, I'm Tim Pham. <laughs> and I'm Channing Curtis. And that woo that you might have heard, that's Thomas Patrick. He's our meteorologist. <laughs> <a> good woo. <laughs> we do, especially on a day like this, Thomas, because you know, it really does feel warmer this morning than it did yesterday morning. Just a little bit, yeah. but it crossed that 32 degree threshold. And it just seems to make a world of difference, doesn't it? I like to joke that 33 and 31 degrees, those are completely different uh, equations when it comes to how it feels outside. There's your live look over Coeur d'Alene. Spokane's got 36 right now, which is about five, six degrees warmer than it was yesterday. We did bottom out with temperatures in the 20s yesterday. Looks like today it's between about 30, 35 has been where our lows are. That's not to say there aren't a few 20s on the map. I got Colville, Deer Park, Northeastern Washington as the cold spots this morning. So that is still where the temperatures are at their coldest and perhaps frostiest outside. But this afternoon, even the midday hours, like yesterday and like on Tuesday, we will have those spotty showers that will start to pop up during the daytime hours. High temperatures still ending up in the 50s. Well, as you're getting ready to head out the door this morning, let's take a look at one of our traffic cameras right now. This is I-90 and State Line, and as you can see at 6.02 this morning, traffic moving along rather smoothly. We'll be checking in with different traffic cameras throughout the morning here on Up With Crip. Happening today, the 2024 Washington GOP convention kicks off here in Spokane. Krem 2's Brandon T. Jones live in downtown Spokane for us this morning. So Brandon, tell us more about what party leaders have planned for this weekend. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah, good morning, Tim. Well, I think the big thing to keep an eye on is who the state Republicans come away from this weekend as their nomination to run for governor. Who are they going to officially endorse? That's a discussion and that's a topic that's going to take place this weekend. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on that. And with that in mind, we also know that the convention officially kicks off today and runs through April 20th with sponsors like Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers and Secretary of State candidate Bob Haglin. Along with that governor race we mentioned, party delegates from across the state are gathering to endorse candidates for state and federal elections. With that, the convention is encouraging all Republicans from across the state to attend, but you'll have to pay a basic guest fee of $50. So again, we are going to be keeping an eye on who they officially endorse for that nomination. And of course, we do know the governor race will be taking place later this year, and our current governor, Jay Inslee, is not seeking re-election. But for now, reporting live here at the Convention Center, Brandon T. Jones, Crimson News. The man accused of murdering four University of Idaho students says that he was out driving when the killings took place. That's the official alibi submitted by Brian Koberger's defense team yesterday. Last summer, Koberger claimed that he was out driving alone at the time of the murders. The new alibi submitted says that he was south of Pullman and west of Moscow near Wawawai Park. He says that cell phone data will corroborate his claims and that he plans to offer testimony from an expert to show that he was not in the area at the time of the murders. Koberger is expected to be back in court next month for a hearing to move his trial out of Latah County. Covering Kootenai County this morning, the Coeur d'Alene Police Department is growing. They broke ground on the expansion of its headquarters. Plans have been in the works for nearly two years. The whole project cost a little more than $6 million. Coeur d'Alene Police say they needed the expansion because they ran out of room in their current building and need the space to keep up with the growing population. When this building was built in 1999, 25 years ago, with the 75 employees, we've had a 62% increase in that. Right now, the city of Coeur d'Alene is about 58,000, and the build-out is about 87,500. Today, we have 122 employees, and we only had locker room space for those 80. So many of us have our lockers, if you will, in bags under our desks or other places. Work is set to start at the end of the month. The first phase of the project is expected to be done by next March. This morning, we're learning more about what happened last week when a woman allegedly ran over and killed a man with his own truck. That woman now says the 70-year-old man offered her money for sex. Newly released court documents say Gerald Fox offered 27-year-old Alyssa Bray a ride last Tuesday while she was walking along Sunset Highway. Police say that at some point, Bray took control of the truck, allegedly hitting and killing Fox in the process. Police later found Fox partially clothed on the side of the road. When police interviewed Bray, she said, quote, he wanted more of me and it gave me a gross feeling and, quote, I didn't have to kill him. 
Police arrested Bray on first degree murder charges and entered her plea before a judge yesterday. Do we have a plea in the case? Uh, yes, uh, she'll plead not guilty, Your Honor. The state's asking to maintain uh, the bond of a million dollars. The deceased, Gerald Fox, was found guilty of possessing child pornography in 2022. He was a registered sex offender in Spokane County. Bray is set to be arraigned at a later date. This morning, Washington's ban on high-capacity magazines remain in limbo. Last week, a Superior Court judge ruled the state law unconstitutional, but the state Supreme Court quickly issued a stay, keeping the ban in place. Yesterday, there was a hearing about whether the stay should be extended while the ruling is being appealed. A lawyer for a gun shop in western Washington says they were flooded with customers while the ban was briefly lifted. Um, here we had several hundred magazines purchased in the two hours intervening between the Superior Court's order and this court issuing the stay. I think that evinces that they are in common use and they're in high demand by the public. A Supreme Court commissioner says he hopes to rule next week whether to keep that ban in place for now. With rates of homelessness surging, cities across the country are now trying to combat the crisis. So next week, the U.S. Supreme Court will hear arguments in a case that could change how camping bans work in Spokane as well as other cities. Right now, people experiencing homelessness cannot be punished for sleeping or camping on public property if there's no other place for them to go, like a shelter. You might remember last fall, the city of Spokane under then Mayor Nadine Woodward urged the high court to take up this case and overturn it. The case is now set to go before the Supreme Court on Monday. The time now is 607. Let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. Today, the University of Washington football player charged with raping two women is expected to appear in court for the first time. 18 year old Tylen Rogers was arrested earlier this month. Documents show one of the victims reported the rape to the university's Title IX office during last year's football season. Rogers was briefly suspended, but then allowed to play in the national championship game. Covering Kootenai County, a sheriff's deputy crashed his patrol car into an electrical pole yesterday. The deputy was not seriously hurt, and his canine partner was not harmed either in the crash. Our news partners at the Coeur d'Alene Press report an early investigation shows the crash was caused when a driver of another car pulled out in front of the patrol car. Idaho State Police are now investigating the crash. This morning, the Velocity are headed back to the Lilac City after a disappointing loss in the third round of the U.S. Open Cup. Though the Velocity, they really did put up a good fight. The Las Vegas Lights sent them off the pitch in a 2-1 to -one victory in extra time. The Velocity next play the Central Valley Fuego at home in the first round of the Jägermeister Cup on April 27th. Well, Lime scooters are relaunching across Spokane County. Lime will relaunch in Spokane Valley, Airway Heights, and Newport this week. The scooters, though, will not be in the city of Spokane. However, the company says it hopes to resume its partnership with the city under a new program still in the works. That is a look at your morning rush. Time is now 6.09. Another check of our weather forecast where today is going to feel a lot like it did yesterday. Still pretty cool for this morning and another chance for scattered showers in the afternoon hours. At the moment, Doppler radar is mostly clear, though there is some lingering moisture over the panhandle of North Idaho and maybe very far north Ponderay County in Washington. But this is mostly over the mountains as it stands right now. I think we'll be back to those pop up scattered showers in the afternoon. First frost advisories of the season issued for the Lewiston and Moses Lake areas. Temperatures near freezing, maybe as uh, uh, mild as 36 uh, at the moment, but still could see some frost on the ground. But our temperatures will still hover around the mid 50s to the low 60s across the inland northwest today. Coming up, I'll detail the weekend forecast and how much warmer it will be by then.